Well, welcome to the Royal Ocean Racing Club Time Over Distance Series. And this week, we are joined by one of the world's greatest boat builders, Jason Carrington. Jason cut his teeth at Green Marine in Livington as an apprentice before going on to compete in four editions of the Round the World Race. We're going to be looking at a number of mind-blowing boat building projects during this show. Jason joins us from Carrington Boats in Hyde, Southampton. Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you, Louie. Nice to be here. I just want to apologise for the state of my nose. I, I had a bit of a, a boating accident. A little bit embarrassing. I, I won't go into it, but it's um, <laughs> that's why I'm looking like I look. <laughs> it, it doesn't show, honestly, Jason. It, it, oh, you need to look closer. <laughs> Just a flesh wound. Just yeah. a flesh wound. Yeah. Jason, thanks so much for uh, for coming on the show. And uh, we've got a picture up here um, of you with your family and a boatyard behind. Um, what was it like growing up in Lymington? Oh, it was it was wonderful. You know, my, my sister and I, I think we could definitely say we had the idyllic uh, childhood, really. I mean, this picture is uh, me with my, my mum, Wynn, uh, in, her, in her boat. She used to run a boat trip called The Water Out Up and Down the River. Uh, and that's my sister Emma next to me. Um, a lot of people will know Emma. She she now works with um, her husband, West Engineering, who make custom metalwork for lots of race boats. And in the background, the boatyard in the background with the crane was my dad's boatyard, which was uh, bridge boat and crane. And and he built some pretty cool boats. He built um, Saracen to name one, which was a one tonner for John McCarthy, which which did very well. And um, also offshore power boats, which I, I used to, as a kid. I was probably more into that than sailing boats to be honest but yeah no we had the we had the perfect childhood it was wonderful yeah and we had a little chat beforehand and you mentioned a couple of big influences for you in those early years and one i'll be honest with you I, i've never heard of uh, the gentleman till i looked him up edgar uh, kookerbacker tell us tell us a little bit about edward Co uh, edgar kookerbacker <laughs> edgar, edgar yeah I'm, i met edgar actually when i um started my apprenticeship at green marine he was building his own boat which um he, he was going to sail around the, a composite boat that he sailed around the world with his, his girlfriend and uh, marguerite and um they were edgar was great mates of bill and elsa um and he he was actually the sort of sailing master on both the flyer boats well they got connie's always obviously credited with putting those campaigns together which he, he obviously did but Edgar kind of made it happen um, and, and was a wonderful sailor and seaman. So I, I met Edgar at Green Marine and actually went off and did a trip with him um, to Chile uh, from right. Holland. Yeah, around Cape, around, wrong way around Cape Horn. So that was a, that was a good baptism of fire into <laughs> offshore sailing. And you, and, you, and you told me when we had that chat that that really got you to think about doing a round the world race and and I know Claire Francis was very much an early influence is that right Jason yeah that's true so Claire was great mates with my mum and dad my dad was is, well his godfather to Thomas uh, their son um, and my mum was great friends with Claire um, and my dad again with the boatyard helped Claire get ADC AccuTrack ready for that that whip bread I think it was gosh 77 something like that yeah um, so we I sort of witnessed that growing up and kind of it was certainly excited by it but I just I hadn't I never really did much dinghy sailing, so I didn't. I never had that kind of natural um, feel, if you like. So I, ca I came at it late and came a different route. And the, the other people that I was sailing with at the time were Brian and Pam Seffrey Cooper, who uh, you know, who a lot of people will know, who did a lot of Admirals Cups, won the Admirals Cup actually, and they they sort of took me under their wing, and um, you know, that got me going in those early days. At the same time, I was doing my apprenticeship at Green Marine. Yeah, I don't think Claire Francis gets the credit she ought to, you know. I mean, she was the first um, woman skipper in the in the round the world race, wasn't she? Yeah, she was, and she's she was amazing. I mean, all these girls, you know, they are amazing. You know, they're often uh, very petite and pretty, and they, you know, this, Sam's another one, and you know, they they, they are, and Emma, you know, Moose's um, wife. It's it's incredible the talent and the the grit they have, you know. But certainly Claire in those early days, you know, she she did that race with an all male crew. Um, and she's she's tiny, Claire. You know, <laughs> so it's pretty, it pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, we'll move on to the um, the next slide. And I know this was after your, your apprenticeship, but you you start you were the first ever apprentice at the world famous Green Marine Yard. What what was it like? You know, being an apprentice at Green Marine. 
uh, well, it, it was it was wonderful. I mean, I was lucky to to you know to be in it. I went round. I remember getting on my bike and cycling round to um, Undershore Road then, which was the little factory Green Marine started off in. And I think there were five people working at Green Marine, and you know, Bill and Bill mixed the resin, and Ian made sure everything went on the material went on properly. And um, I bowled up, saw Bill, and said, you know, I'm looking for an apprenticeship. And Bill said, oh, we don't want to give you an apprenticeship, you know. Ah. <laughs> just come and have a job <laughs> but um anyway it, i managed to persuade them and um again they took me under their wing and it was it was brilliant you know because i was at, at that time you know these boats were really pioneering in the in the boat building mm. sense you know they were there was mcconaughey's doing it and you know green marina cooks and a few of these yards that were still quite new and carbon boats or pre-preg boats were certainly ver- very new and i think we did the first pre-preg hull which i think was promotion in the 50 footer in those oh. days um, so I, I sort of, you know, was right there when it was all happening. So it was, it was wonderful. I was very lucky. And, and again, met lots of, lots of people and Bill and Ian, you know, let me do my sailing and, and in many ways helped me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've got a picture. Thank you very much, Rick Tomlinson. Uh, I, I, Rick is just magnificent. And, uh, I'm pretty sure Rick might've been on the crew of interim justicia, but yeah, Rick. Rick was on the crew and I was fighting for his position because it was interim interim was a European team so you had to have one uh, nationality for every country and I was I was already great mates with Rick but at the same time I was kind of wanting to put a dagger in his back because I wanted his spot <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I but didn't you, get yeah, it <laughs> yeah, yeah but you you did get on that race in Fortuna you know the, your first round the world race but it didn't go well uh, you know it ended prematurely didn't it yeah we haven't got although it was a very short uh, race i haven't got time to tell you all the dramas that happened on that race but it was uh, i mean ev- everything that could happen did happen um but i you know again i learned a lot and i you know it was great to that was when i first really met laurie and um you know it was i don't regret any of that it was it was sad leaving interim after i'd built it um, but the offer wasn't there to do the race, so I, you know, when I had the offer from Laurie, I, I took it, and and that led to other things, you know. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, a big shout out to Rick Tomlinson there. Yes, yeah, second in that Whitbread Rick. He's not just a photographer, that man, is he? No, he's got he's got many talents. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go on to Silk Cut, uh, Whitbread sixty nineteen seventy eight ninety eight. Whitbread with Laurie Smith and all the boats in it Whitbread 60's box rule uh, w- and what a race that was yeah that was a that was a good race it was I mean we had what can I tell you about Silk Cut I think um we all a lot of us on Silk Cut started off with the F with Magnus um actually I was the first I was the first guy to be taken on at EF um we had a boys boat and a girls boat and we had the old uh Galicia and Interim actually that we were practicing in um, so we kept we you know we were progressing with EF to do the race and then Laurie um, came in as the skipper of EF um, and then changed tack to Silk Cut when he got the British sponsor and a few of us uh, Jan Decker, Stu Bannatyne, um, yeah. jump, jump ship, Neil McDonald, uh, yeah Neil McDonald um, but, it, but it was an interesting time and you know and a lot one thing that I it always bugs me a little bit is you know a lot of a lot of credit was given to EF for, um, amongst other things, the Code Zero, and certainly EF certainly deserved a lot of credit. It was a wonderful campaign, and they were by far the class act in that race. But um, the actual, the, the the first Code Zero I ever remember with hoisting, which was would have been on interim, was was called. Uh, it came, I remember Magnus coming marching down the dock with it under his arm, and it and it had lorry sail written on it. So it was something that lorry had thought of this sort of tight luft headsail. And then we we started developing it in the early days before um, Paul and the guys arrived. And then we had then it was called uh, the Marley, which was masthead asymmetric laminate one. Um, so it was a, yeah it was a very interesting time. And we we had the first halyard lock on the rig because we knew we had to get te- luff tension. In those days we used to have to you know you hoist the sail and we had to go up the rig strop it off. It was pretty pretty unpleasant. Um, so it was definitely a, a pioneering boat with lots of good stuff. Roger Scammell was involved in that halyard lock. It was. It was good to be involved in, but certainly for the race, we just, you know, we weren't really there. EF did a much better job at developing the whole sale package and just took it took it to another level, really. Um, yeah. But we had a, we had a good, fantastic team and some good moments. What got the twenty four hour record, and yeah, it was it was definitely a, a, a 
an eye opener of um, you know sailing those boats in the Southern Ocean. And we had twelve crews, so you pushed them very hard. It was it was full on. Yeah, and you just really off the names there. You know, Neil McDonald, Stu Bannatyne. You know, I mean, and and these and at those times, th- these guys were. I guess in their early thirties or late twenties. Yeah, even. no, we we were, we were in our twenties. Um, Tim Powell, Ado Stead, you know, Jez, yeah. Jez Fenstone, uh, yeah, Gordon, Lightning. It was they were, everyone was there. It was it was one Jerry Mitchell, um, Albert. It was a we it was a fantastic crew. We we just got some. You know, you've got to get the whole package right, and we we didn't. But I do think we got the crew right, and I think that's how we managed to get the twenty four hour record. And and we sort of came good towards the end of the race. Steve Hales yeah. was there, another one. Um, you know. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah. Magnus Olsen, uh, you know, a giant amongst giants, and I know a big influence on you. What, why was that, Jason? I think because Magnus, you know, again, going back to my Green Marine days, I was, I was trying, I, I kind of went back to Green Marine to build interim because I thought that might be a chance to get into the race, you know, so... I, Magnus was was then living in Limington and um, he was project managing or, or overseeing the build of, of Interim at, at Green Marine. So I pestered him daily and I used to, we, my girlfriend and I at the time had a little mini clubman estate and we used to pick him up and on the way to work and so I'd badger him, badger him on the way to work, I'd badger him at work and I'd badger him on the way back. Oh, yeah. And eventually, you know, he he, um, he he took me with him. When we finished the boat, we, we sailed to, uh, left Southampton, sailed to Stockholm archipelago which was, was I couldn't believe turning up there you know wonderful and I stayed with that team did the round Europe race and yeah, so Magnus just he gave me that initial chance into that race you know and um and of course he's such a massive a massive character it's, it was you know but he was a big he, he's a big part of me and I you know I was very sad obviously when uh, he passed away mm. okay well we've got a, a little clip a pretty un, unseen clip actually of Magnus this is later on. This is actually taken in the uh, 2011 Royal Caribbean 600. Um, let's just play the, the clip and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll come back to Magnus. So hi Magnus, tell us what you're doing on Amber Sail. Ah, uh, this is my old boat, Asa Bloy. For a while, we were almost the fastest Volvo 60 in the world. And now these wonderful, wonderful people, people from, from Litauia, Litauia has, has, uh, has had the boat, had the boat for, a while, for a while. And they are doing, doing this wonderful, wonderful thing to promote, promote Litauia, Litauia as a country and, country and promote promote sailing, sailing, sailing in Litauia. In Litauia. I, think I think it's wonderful that they are, they are such wonderful, wonderful people, uh, these guys. I, 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 sailing needs more of these kind of people. I say that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that sums up uh, Magnus. He sees the best in in a lot of people, most of the time. Jason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, we we would always, you know, obviously we went on to sell. I went on to sell with him on uh, Asser Abloy, um, and and a bit with Ericsson as well after that. And you know, he and, and a lot with Trimarans and all sorts of fun stuff up in Sweden. Um, and he, you know, he's known and, and quite rightly as this massive character and he's huge fun. He's, he's also extremely competitive, honestly, probably the most competitive person I've ever met. Whatever you're, whether you're playing chess, football, anything, he just wants to win. Um, but he, he definitely, you know, it wasn't, there were moments when he wasn't, you know, super happy. And certainly when he wasn't happy, we knew about it. We were on Asa, we were kind of, again, we were quite a young team. We, we, we got going after that we had a tough first two legs but then we got going with Neil sort of leading us and Magnus was a massive part of that campaign and his uh, his charisma and you know when he was up we were all kind of up but when he was down oh dear <laughs> we, we all went down with him <laughs> it didn't happen often but it, it could happen <laughs> yeah well Asa Abloy uh, is one of the four sort of um, case studies that we've chosen uh, to really have a look at um, and you know here's the boat fully flying uh, you know unbelievable picture that well done rick fantastic um the most advanced boat in the 2001 2002 volvo ocean race i think that's widely accepted why jason yeah well i think i I'm, i think that's you could say that's debatable i think ilbrook probably design wise had a had a march on everyone um and got a lot of things right. I think what what we did 
do differently on Esther Abloh is we focus so much on the build. I think it was the first time that, you know, a team had said, look, let's let's try and get an advantage with the build of the boat. And in those days uh, with the Volvo 60s, um, anything you could save in the weight of the boat, where, whether it was a fitting or the hull or the deck or wherever, or the mast, whatever, you, just, you put that into the bulb. Mm-hmm. Um, which was just horsepower, and we we did that in a big way on Astra Ablo, and we you know we we made a big jump. It, it, we didn't we didn't see it straight away, but it it just came on leaps and bounds in the race, and certainly by you know even I don't know after the first two legs we were we were pretty tough to beat. We we knew we had a very fast boat, and uh, that really was just stability driven. I remember leaving uh, that the leg from um, La Rochelle up to Gothenburg. We we were always terrible at starting for some reason. <laughs> so I won't blame Neil for that. I don't think Neil was even steering the start. <laughs> but I remember we we got we thought we had at last we thought oh, we got a good start and we took off and then we were going so slowly. We we're like, what's going on? And then we looked back and we had the we had the boy wrapped around the rudder, the no. pin end pin end boy. So first of all, I jumped over the side. Then Richard Mason jumped over the side. By the the whole fleet had gone. Um, we managed to get it off got going again by this time you could hardly see the fleet but that that sort of leg up the up that mm-hmm. coast by the morning at Ushant, we'd pass the whole fleet and um you know that was just just um raw speed and you know stability sailing blast reaching up that coast and it was a real you know it was a wonderful feeling i think it annoyed annoyed probably the rest of the fleet but it was good for us <laughs> <laughs> and you know you built the boat and you raced the boat that that adds a lot of responsibility but also a hell of a lot of work jason how 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 do you combine the two and give them both 100 uh well I, I think it's i don't know that i did do it very well i think you you do end up very um pretty burnt out i mean i, I was a lot younger then so i guess i had a lot more energy and, and again we had a fantastic team you know around and magnus again was supporting me magnus got me got me involved to do that job of running the running the build. I was actually with, with Dolts um, on Club Med uh, before I joined the ASA project. Um, mm. But it, you know, it was, yeah, I, I dealt with it. It's certainly, it's it's tough when you're lying in the bunk and all the, no- all the noise, you're wondering, oh God, what's gonna, what's gonna happen next? But um, you do have a, as you gain experience, you have a pretty good feel, you know, for the boat and you know, you know what it can deal with and what it can't deal with. And, you know, with the likes of, um, Magnus and Neil, they're they're pretty smart sailors. You know, they know when to push and when not to. So it was, I was in good company. Okay. Now you provided this shot. Wow! And look at this is down below on Asser Abloy, and you know, I was thinking of ex, of expletives or something. Like this to me, it looks like a set from Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, it was a cool boat. I just wanted to, people to see how, you know, how refined it was. You, you know, this was a long time ago, but we we, we took, put a lot of care into that boat. And, it, you know, she was female, mold, first um, real race boat, certainly offshore race boat and pre-preg that was built in a female mould. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that, because she was in those days of Kevlar and Corsell or Divini Cell foam cores, it was almost transparent. So right. in the bow where, you know, where the boat was, had no logo or anything you, on a sunny day you could see people outside stood on the dock straight through the side of the boat and certainly you could see people walking on deck it was a yeah it was a very very cool boat and a very, I think it was a very pioneer I think it changed a lot of a lot of the way you know the way boats were built and the, the amount of detail that went into the build was I think this was kind of the start of it in many ways yeah so so the, the rules of the race said you couldn't build a carbon boat it was a Kevlar boat but the but the mold was actually carbon, wasn't it? Yeah, we could build a carbon mold, um, and, and and we were the only female molded boat. We built two boats actually. This was the second boat um, we did for two boat testing. Um, I mean, there were, there were a lot of pioneering builders. You know, still, uh, Killian Bush was is obviously won more races than anyone in terms of builds. Um, Richard Gillies, there are lots of lots of good builders. But I think that, I think I do think this boat was special. Mm. And in those days, you weren't using milling machines for the mould, were you? You had to. No, we we made the mould uh, by hand. But you know, we had very. This was she was built at Green Marine again. We had very good good guys. So we built we built a plug and then we um, made a mould off the plug. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay, I, I've got to give a quick shout out to Barney. Uh, good to see you there, Barney. I'm sure Jason knows exactly who. Who that is? You can see it on the screen there, Jason. I think, can't you? I, yeah, I can. I thought Barney yeah. was in prison after his That's... illegal barbecue. <laughs> Moving on swiftly. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
We'll come to round in a bit, Barney. Just get get yourself another cup of coffee. Um, so here we got the stats from that uh, from that race, um, the two thousand one two thousand two Volvo Ocean race, and there it shows you the the the, the leg winners, Ilbrook. They got they got the the charge at the beginning there, didn't they, Jason? Yeah, they did. They were they were certainly the they were the class act of that race for sure, and, and very hard to beat. And um, you know, they've been going a long time. They they bought the uh, EF boat. I actually was I actually was with Ilbrook initially before I joined Asser Abloy. So they bought um, both the EF boats, refitted them in Germany, and then trained hard. And again, you know, great sail program. John Kostecki kind of you know came in and at a very high level. The crew were all really good. So yeah, very, very uh, good competitor. Yeah, uh, and and Ilbrook won four legs. Asa Abloy won three legs. But the the other interesting thing about this particular Volvo Ocean, well, it it became the Volvo Ocean race after this race, or or during it, I should say. But everything changed after that, didn't it? I mean, you you you, you no longer went into the ice fields of Southern Ocean. Yeah, exactly. And no, I think I think this was the. Of course, I would say that because I'm a little <laughs> older now. But I think this was a wonderful race. You know, the boats were. It was the. It, we were right at the arrow of the Volvo 60s. It was the last time, and all, all the boats were very close. They all had, the, you know, their moments of um, strong moments, st- strong strong areas. Um, yeah. Il- Ilbrook certainly, and, and us probably a, a, not, a notch above the others. Um, but it was a wonderful race on that front because it wasn't just, you know, they weren't one design boats. Everyone had got there from with, with different ideas, different sails, but still it was so close. There were so many very close finishes to, down to minutes in that in that race um, and a lot of com- camaraderie between the teams. You know, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in some respects, I know you were with Ericsson in the 2005-2006 race. And and uh, did, I can't remember how many legs you did, but you did a uh, you did a few. You didn't do all of them, did you, Jason? No, I did up to um, I got off after the after the leg to Brazil. But yeah. it was a bit of a transition for you into almost full on boat building rather than pro bit, racing. Yeah, I think so. I think those boats were you know were really um, the, the Volvo seventies. It was a big step from from the sixties, you know, and, and I think the only you know the only boat that really got it right was one with um abn um and everyone else was you know a, a long way off the pace <laughs> whereas in the, whereas in the you know the the race before it was a much more even you know with the with that race we all knew pretty quickly that um abn were really gonna march away with it it was uh, yeah and they got they got the design right and they sold the boat damn well didn't they so that they did yeah i mean i'm going back to Asser, i'll always remember one moment just to so you can imagine how close that race was. We um, the first Southern Ocean leg, so we left uh, Cape Town, windy straight away, and I think Ilbrook had a, had an issue the first night where they almost sank. We we led that 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 leg for a long time, and actually we passed Kagulan Island, uh, got got some kelp around our keel, and we had to. This was at night, very windy. We we dropped the chute, and we were in the middle of a back down, and lit out out in a ball of spray, sort of out of the mist came Ilbrook. <laughs> And she, she passed literally like a hundred meters um, to lure of us. I mean, just, just who? And you, you know, it's very rare that you see that kind of. Uh, you, you never see another boat in those conditions, and you, th- you, you know, it's crazy when you're sailing. When you see another boat, and I, I mean, they were so close. I could see. I think Stu was driving. I, I could see the whites of his eyes. <laughs> but, um, I, I'll, I'll never forget it. It was amazing. Yeah. And they, they went on to win that leg, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, for those of you that watch a lot of the Time of Distance series, we often follow a timeline, but we're not going to for this one because we're doing four case studies. So going from the ridiculous Asser Abloy, I think I'll get away with that, to the sublime Elsa. And this was uh, built uh, by you, Jason, at Baltic, I believe. Yeah, so Baltic built the boat. Um, I I was managing the build, if you like, for a private client. Um, yeah, and she she was a super little boat, and it was, you know, everything you see on that boat was custom, literally everything. <laughs> so it was a real blank sheet of paper to do whatever we, you know, to do whatever we could to make something special. I so said she's, I mean, she obviously looks like a classic boat, and she was kind of 
figured around the, uh, the eight meter look but she's all you know she's all carbon hull and uh very light laminates and yeah very, very cool boat really fun to do and baltic did a wonderful job and nice to work with them up there um yeah and i think this is this is back in the archipelago sailing yeah yeah, yeah. um here's another shot showing a beautiful line stack the 47 foot um and yeah it's just, just stunning yeah, that's right. Not not a lot of room down below, <laughs> but definitely cosy, but but wonderful. And it was quite nice on this, but I got to work with um, my wife, B, who who does interiors on normally big, big yachts. So she helped with this boat. So that was that was also fun. So it was just a it was it was something different. You know, I hadn't done a I don't only really done race boats. So this was a new a new thing for me, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we've got to show the interior on this boat. Uh, it, 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 to me, it looks like a sort of Swedish cafe. You know, it's <laughs> beautiful. It does, and, it, you know, you can just see the detail there. Again, every, everything, all those, the glasses you see, I got. we got those made. Um, they're all engraved with El, the name Elsa, the plates. It was it was little touches, the towels. It was just it was yeah. a wonder, wonderful little boat, yeah. Yeah, and, and there's um, Jan, Jan Kling, Klingmuller. Uh, yeah. around uh saying saying hi there uh, thank you jan i yeah, appreciate good, you, good on you jan. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah we've got a, a nice shot of elsa here and uh i'm just going to show a bit of the detail on here uh jason let's have a look at the uh repeaters yeah so that then yeah just to you, you see the d you can't really see there but like all the all the bmg um instruments we made brush titanium um bezels for them so everything was uh you know nothing there was no plastic on that boat it was all the all the fittings on the gooseneck uh roger scammell did all the deck gear um together with my brother-in-law actually <laughs> stew west right, um right. yeah but it was it was yeah it, 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 there wasn't anything missed it was uh, a real there you go the jib the jib sheets ran through the core um very clean deck even the jammers we had custom covers on them and it, you know, it was it was engineered. Uh, Mark Bishop did the engineering, so it was very, you know, it was a racy boat. It was a light boat for for what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, just looking at the lovely flush fittings, I think this is all custom. Everything um, was cut. There's nothing that's not custom there. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lovely boat, lovely yeah. boat. Yeah. And and for a project like that, it's it's as much work and brain power as as a big race boat isn't it jason what why on earth do you take something like that on um well i for me it was it was something different and um i, I love these um i love being given a free hand to to you know get do something that's uh, unusual and custom and, that, and that's what we had with this boat and i and i love the look of it it was you know it was different and, and going up to work with the baltic yachts was i hadn't done that before so that was that was fun um yeah, it was it was it was a good moment for sure. I really enjoyed it. Mm, okay. Um, case study number two. Yeah. Now, the first <laughs> time I saw the hull on this boat, I just thought, I, I, I've gone. I, I'm in a Doctor Who set, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got to say, Ran Seven, Nicholas Zenstrom's Fast Forty. I mean, this was, you know. A real game changer. What was the overall brief? Uh, obviously from Nicholas, but also from uh, Sean Carkey. Because what, what what was the overall brief for, for for this boat? Well, I think I think Nicholas was keen to, you know, he's got a, he's got a house in on the Hamble, and I think he was keen to do some sailing closer to home, um, and, and also to sail with his mates, you know, and, and also he's you know he's always been good at bringing young people in, and with with the fast forties you. You know, there's this um, split with the amateurs and the pros. So I think he liked the look of it. Um, and, and you know, Nicholas, I'm sure you know, he, Nicholas does things properly, and he's he's supported with Tim has been for many years. And they always, you know, and Jan, of course, who was just <laughs> just on here. <his>, um, <laughs> they're a very strong team. So they, you know, they knew what they wanted, um, but they didn't they didn't do anything crazy. They just did it properly. You know, it's, I think that was it's, it's worth pointing out that you know that fast forty fleet. It's 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 not like the TPs where you've got eleven or twelve, you know, very very even boats which are all designed to the hilt and then built, you know, to similar levels. I think the Fast Forty was kind of rich pickings. A lot of the boats were older, um, 
Ran in many ways was the first boat boat built properly to the rule, and she was built like a race boat. You know, she's with IM fiber and um, female molded, and she, she, you know, she was a lot, lot lighter than the other boats. And and of course, you you mustn't forget that she was very well sailed. You know, so yeah, um, yeah. you got Tim on there, Steve. The young the, the youngsters were no slouches. They you know they generally, I think it's fair. To, I mean, I sail with Morty. I think we do a pretty good job, but generally these guys you know, probably a, have a slight edge on us, <laughs> but certainly the boat was super quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just going to uh, hurry in on it. Cause you mentioned it, not me. So you, you were full on crew for girls on film racing against the boat that you built. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. How did that, how did, how did that well, work, Jason? Well, I kind of, I kind of knew what was going to happen, but, um, you know, Morty's always very confident, as you know, and the guys were all, you know, oh, we'll be all right, you know. And we, I remember the first time we lined up with them, and all the first start, we started really strong on them. It, you know, they were to lured of us, we were bow forward, you know, and they were, they were, oi, we're, 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 we're off. <laughs> and then slowly just ch- yeah. chew forward and spat us out, and that's really, that, that was it. And by the, you know, quite soon, she was marching off to the top mark, and yeah, I mean, she, it, it was a, a lesson in what you can do with them. Um, when you do it properly and yeah. you know and it was a team effort you know we we built the boat but jan did a great job tim tim knows what you need to do to put a program together um you know it was a very much a team effort but very a lot of fun it's always fun working with those guys and this was this was no no different okay um and i, I should say of course it was this was she was such a special boat to, to us at carrington boats because it was our first boat and and when we when nicholas you know sort of signed up nicholas actually signed up to build the boat gave us a deposit we didn't even have a yard or any guys to build right. it so he was pretty brave <laughs> yeah i you know so hands up i should have said that this was the first boat built by carrington boats at your at your facility um yeah and uh, so, yeah yeah, so not, a bad, yeah. not a bad one to get but uh, yeah, um, she looks she'll always be very special to us and we you know <laughs> everyone that worked on it we you know we love that little boat it's cool that this this shot and, and by the way thank you to alex Irwin from sportography for the for the pictures um and here he's captured really well the the deck layout and i'm just going to focus in on that pit area and a couple of details there um often jason you find yourself in the pit i know that's pretty minimalistic yeah, it was. I mean, it was, um, to be fair, this deck, the deck layout for Ran was very much a development of um, Morty's boat, Girls on Film, which was, uh, which I think it's fair to say was pushed by, che- you know, Cheese, Dirk de Ridder and Morty, um, who sort of developed it for the, the previous um, round. And then Tim and those guys sort of took it on, obviously with Sean and, and co, um, with, the, with the primaries, different size, moving the pit all the way forward. But it, it really works. I mean, certainly the, the boats, the Fast 40s are very much, I'm bound to say that because I do the pit for Morty, but they kind of run from the pit. You know, you have right. to, the pit man really does have to call the manoeuvres and uh, orchestrate things, if you like. And being so far forward, you can see you're right by the rig. So if things go wrong, you're, you're right there. I mean, I, I could, if we had a bad drop, I could literally just reach forward and grab the chutes. It's, it's a very neat, neat deck layout. And um, very, yeah. but again, these guys refined it more than took it a step further, if you like. Mm. But to, to have that deck set up, we're looking at the main hatch there, aren't we? Yeah, so that's this is the downside. I mean, the boat was very much well, at most pretty much all the fast forties, um, you know, pretty much tailored for inshore racing. And I know Nicholas and the guys went and did the round Gotland race, and I think they were, it was a windy race, and they were leading by a country mile. They were right on the heels of a TP that was doing the same race, but they they just had to stop because they were sinking. Um, you know, there's a, they, I mean, you've seen them in the Solent even when they're hard running there, they spend a lot of time underwater. Um, so yeah, that hatch doesn't, doesn't really work. I would say <laughs> when, you're, when you're offshore yes. and it's blowing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and here we've got a, a lovely shot of uh, Ran from, from the bow. And I think one point I would like to make here is, as you said earlier, this isn't a full on pro team. In fact, it's not permitted in the class rules, half of the team have to be amateurs and nicholas uh, zenstrom particularly liked that aspect of the rule because it meant he got people on the boat that didn't have gray hair yeah that's that's right i think i think 
I, I, I think that's right to say Nicholas loves sailing with his mates. Uh, he's a very mm-hmm. social guy, but he also, you know, he's he's always been good at bringing in young people, and then this really gave him an opportunity to do that. So I think that was, you know, that was probably the big part of the big sell for him to this class. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and he and he didn't, like, as I said before, he didn't just pick any young guys. And I mean, certainly on girls on film, I'm I'm on the boat, and um, you, you know, the amateurs. And I completely get it with with a uh, very good on our boat, but they also they are definitely Morty's mates, you know, which is which is how you know how Morty wants to sail, and, and so it should be. But I think Nicholas was more getting in these young guys that are going to be the future professionals, probably. Mm-hmm. And that, no disrespect for the for all of us on girls on film, but we're all a bit past it to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's great that he's giving them the opportunity, as Morty has done. In the past, you know, in the Admiral's Cup, you know, you look at who he was racing with and and boats like Cherney Keefe, oh, I could keep going, all the TP-52. Oh, for uh, for sure, including, you know, including people who are sailing on Ran. You know, Tim would have been helped along the way by Morty. I mean, yeah, many people have said that, and it's absolutely true. And and me, you know, I I heard, I heard, I can't remember who Morty was on one, I think he was on the stretch and uh, Sturfer, I think, the other day talking about that that sinking and I, I remember being there I was on tram we, it was the first time I sailed with Morty <laughs> we, I was definitely I, I went forward to take the jib down thinking oh, crikey this isn't looking good and I, just, I swam off the foredeck and swam over to Morty and said you were nice to sail with you <laughs> yeah no, wonderful wonderful yeah. uh, uh, the other thing that, that this picture brings out is the upwind performance of Ran. I mean, the, the the crew could hike out that that much further when you've got ten, eleven bodies getting that far off the centre line. It, it it makes a massive difference to your writing moment just just by the crew, doesn't it? It does. But again, you know, I mean, that's a benefit. But the boat was the boat was light. She was built. She was light compared to the other boats. That all the systems that Jan put in were you know were refined and and light. Um, you know, so she, you know, if you were in the marina next to Ran, you, you know, she's probably the, she's the widest boat, um, she's the lightest boat in the water, and she's got mm-hmm. the heaviest keel by a country miles. It's a pretty good yeah. combination, <laughs> um, and it certainly she, upwind. It certainly shows that downwind wasn't so. You know, I think I think sometimes we felt and girls on film that we, you know, there were there were moments when we felt competitive against Ran downwind, particularly. Um, mm. But certainly up when she she had the legs on everyone. Mm-hmm. And um, Jason, thank you very much for these photographs. This is down below on Ran Seven, the Fast Forty. Um, you picked this one out, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, and even with my scant boat knowledge, I came up with rotary drive. Yeah, so I mean, again, it's. This is the Ram, the Ram team. Really, were just pushing. I mean, I chose this picture. I just like the. I like all the composite works. So I was trying to show a bit of that, but um, you, you know, they the, the drivetrain on Ram was. I mean, it didn't. It wasn't like it was a John Williams system, but it was. It was refined. Um, you know, Tim knew he wanted a driven main sheet winch. Things like that. It was just. It was just a step up from what had been done before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's magnificent that boats like this are being built to race in the Solent again because, you know, we haven't seen boats like this racing the Solent in numbers for many years. No, that's right. And it is a, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful class. I think every, anyone that sails on them will tell you that, you know, they're, they're, they're not too big. You don't run out of water too quickly. Um, they're, they're, it, um, Iran is a step up, but it's still, it's fantastic racing. And, you know, and Iran got beaten a few times. It's not, not unbeatable. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I really hope the class, you know, it, I think it has suffered a little bit, but I think they always do these cl- after a certain amount of years, but it's, it's, I'm sure it's got legs and I think anyone that sails these boats loves them, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, another shot, attention to detail. We've got a little inset here. I'm just going to zoom in on that. Did you do that, Jason? <laughs> Come on, probably I probably did, <laughs> but I didn't do the I didn't do the difficult bit, which is all the all the strapping and the nice composite work and the bonding. Um, okay, that would be the guys, you know. Yeah, yeah, hmm. but um, no, fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing us uh, some downstairs images of Rad. Uh, that's uh, marvelous. Um, we've got a little video here. It's actually a bit of slow mo video. This isn't professionally shot. This was uh, shot on a very windy day in the Solent, um, and. Um, the, the, the long and the short of it is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this and uh, um, 
Jason, if you'd like to um, give us a comment. There's Ran in the shed. That was our, our, our yeah. That was our first shed party. <laughs> that's and my wife. Got... That's my wife and lives and my little boy on there. I think. <laughs> okay, cool. Or the boys. <laughs> So, so we've got a slow mo here of of uh, of the boat going through the water. I mean, it's just incredible to to watch this. Uh, you know, it, it, I have to say, we've now seen other boats that have similar setup on the bow, but but this was a bit of a this was a bit of a deal breaker, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you can. I mean, the fast forties. I mean, the, certainly the later ones. They, they are they're so quick downwind. Um, and it's always that I don't know about I don't know what um, I'm sure Justin would say the same thing. When you're doing the pit, you, you're often doing the runners upwind and downwind. And it's when you're coming into the bottom mark, mark and it's windy like this, it's it's such a timing thing because the moment you go forward, this happens. <laughs> but at some point, you've got to get the shoot down. So it just it sort of drives you to push it as as late as you dare and pick your moment, you know. And, and of course, the helmsman's a long way forward too. Um, I mean, the only person in front of the helmsman downwind is the main sheet trimmer. So uh, it, it always made me chuckle that the whole team are on the on the transom and Morty's just getting completely hosed in front. <laughs> the same, same was happening to Nicholas here, I'm sure. But it's yeah, it's just it's getting the timing right. And um, yeah, not but, a big but, not a big area on that bow. Yeah, but the bow the bow works. You know, it does seem to pop up. Um, you know, I don't mm. think they're. I don't think it's any worse than the other boats, and maybe it, perhaps it's better. It must have been when we were building it. I thought it would just look like it would just keep going down, but they do seem to bob up pretty well. Yeah. Um, and we're just about to get Justin coming up. In, uh, he's already shouting in the pit there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I know. I know the feeling because <laughs> you know if it goes wrong, everyone's looking at it. it's your fault. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Slattery, by the way. Um, and, yeah, and just coming in the picture there is Nicholas, and that's yeah, you, you his see driving position. Yeah, you see, he's a long way forward. <laughs> that's that is quite incredible, isn't it? When you, yeah, you know, there aren't many boats you see uh, people sitting that far forward, are there? No, no, it's, it's. I mean, and, and often even the main on on girls on film, we'd get Jerry would move back as well on the real breezy stuff, and so literally Morty's all on his own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here's the rest of the crew keeping the uh, rudder in the water at the. And yeah. the pedestal right at the very back of uh, Ran Seven. Yeah, um, they've actually. I think we're, but I think we are, our pedestals behind the behind the Travis. They're a little further forward. Um, okay. Again, a slight, as, and, and I think that's also the, the drive system because they're driving more winches. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool little boat, isn't it? <laughs> it is a very cool, a very cool boat. Yeah. And I'm not on. Uh, I'm not on any commission from Jason, but I think you've still got the mould for it at Carrington Boats. Yeah, you? we we do. It's outside here. We've got a few moulds now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Um, right. Okay. Let's let's move on. Um, now we're getting into uh, the real in my opinion, mind-boggling territory um, of Hugo Boss 7, you know, the Amoka 60. It's not the first boat you've built for Alex Thompson, though, is it? 2007, I think, you go back with Alex. Just... Yeah, yeah, that's right. We did a, a Fino boat for Alex with Neville, actually, with Neville Hutton uh, in Lymington, um, which it, it then was quite a you know pioneering boat. It had the, the one with the two coach roofs. It was a, a nice boat. Um, mm. Yeah, so we, and then uh, we, so we didn't, I think, um, the, then he bought, he had some secondhand boats, and then obviously the, the Hugo Boss 6, which was built at Green Marine, and then, yeah. uh, and then, then this one, Hugo Boss yeah. uh, HB7, as we call it, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is the bow of the boat. Uh, you know, it's not fair to call it Rad S, it's a totally different designer. But talking of different designers, VPLP. Um, in our chat, you call them Le Grand Fromage. <laughs> yeah, I'll get, in, I'll get in trouble for that, but that's what we call Vincent. <laughs> what, what's it? What's it been like working with 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 the designers of of twenty winning Route de Rum boats? Yeah, it was it was one. It was a great opportunity for us, um, and it was wonderful. And we got we have a the project manager for up for up working with with. Um, Carrington Boats here, Tara is French and she was great mates with um, 
Danny, who's a big part of VPLP, and uh, Quentin. So it was very, it was quite a social gathering. They, they came quite, they probably came more than they needed to <laughs> to, have, okay. to have lunch and a few beers. But it was a, it was a great experience. The whole, the whole thing was fun, and the boat was, you know, with, with Alex and and that sponsor. You know, you get to do something pretty special. You can't really tell there, but the whole boat is lacquered, clear carbon, everything, the bow sprit, the whole thing, all the way around. Um, so she, she was a beautiful boat, and just a really fun project and and the team you know um mm. alex's team played a big part in that uh, pete hobson and, and of course guru the engineers structural engineers so it was a it, yeah it was a, a great sort of team effort i would say mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and we, we'd love to work with those guys again for sure that was r- really fun and they they as i say they came um we'd always put the french flag out when they'd come and uh, okay <laughs> we had a lot of fun with them okay yeah. and and obviously going on to uh, to great things this year but, you know, look at this. I mean, this is a piece of art, Jason, isn't it? Yeah, she's, she's I mean, it was funny. It's not unlike Ran, is it? It's, and I, I know the, the VPLP guys did joke that they'd seen Ran and kind of <laughs> took that bevel a bit from Ran. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah it, was, it was almost, you know, pushed even further. And they, I like that about um, Alex. You know, he, he goes, he, he has an idea and he goes for it. And, I, you know, I like that the coach trip was, all, you know, everything was... It all looks right. Um, it make, makes it fun, you know. It's it's cool, and then you can suggest stuff. They're open-minded. It's good, really good. Mm. But I think you know. You told me, you know, with modern CAD design, with 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 milling techniques, you can make these exotic hull shapes. But you can also make exotic structures for the cockpit etc you know it doesn't it, it can be any shape these days can't it yeah it can and i mean there's a lot you can do by hand for sure but it, it just speeds that process up so you can do you know you can do all sorts of cool shapes and things you probably wouldn't consider doing if you had to do it by hand just the the time you know um so yeah i mean it's these are all carbon molds this hugo boss was a split carbon mold we had the, we built the bevel you can see there as part of the hull uh, to define the hull to deck, so the hull to deck join was up on the deck. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a, yeah, pretty racy yeah. build, I'd say this one for sure. Yeah. And very, yeah. they're very complicated boats. I mean, even even before you put put everything down below, they're ju- they're extremely complicated, especially around the foil structure. Just takes takes months to to build it. You know, mm. um, yeah. And, and and tell me when you know when you when you finally got that hull and you put it into the autoclave. Do you sleep well that night, Jason? Uh, well, fortunately, we don't have a clave that big, so we do. We clave okay. some. We clave some of the parts, but you're right. They go. They go into big ovens, and and no, you don't really. You, you worry about it like crazy because any you know any composite boat builder will tell you it's it's not a nothing's for sure. You know, it's even when you do everything right, and we have very tight processes, but one little thing can can trip you up. You know, whether it's uh, whether it's something you change just slightly how you cook it. Um, you know, and there's, yeah. there's different, I mean, the outer skin is not, the real tricky one is the, is the inside skins where you've got honeycomb core and getting the air out and getting those cooks right and the dwell and whether, whether you use a spiking process or a sealing the cells first, but it's, it's, it's not easy and that, no, I don't sleep very well. And we, we always have some, we never leave the boat. There's always somebody there watching right. it all the way through and, and, and we watch it until it's gelled and, the, and then, and then through until it's fully cooked. We have a lot, you know. We have, we have a lot of cooks for a boat like this, the hull, deck, all the structure. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> um, lovely shot of uh, Hugo Boss. Thank you to Alex Thompson Racing for 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 all these uh, pictures. Um, I'm going to take you back to December this year. Um, the TJV December 2019, 25 knots into a brick wall. And virtually took the keel off the boat. They hit something in the water, Jason, um, with with uh, with Alex and also Neil McDonald on board. Um, how on earth did you manage as a team to repair the boat and find the time slotted in? How how on earth does that work? Um, well, I, I guess you know. Firstly, we we definitely we want to look after our clients, and Alex is a, is a you know a great client historically, and, and he's a friend. And Neil, of course, I go go back years with Neil. Um, but but to be brutally honest, we were well into Ben's second boat when that happened. So we we actually didn't take on the main. We didn't do the 
the repair work, if you like, that was done by um, Pro Composite, sort of led by uh, Ryan Taylor and Leo Bryan, who, who did a fantastic job just next door to us. We rented another build box for them. So we, we made all the parts, and there were a lot of parts to make, uh, all the new composite bits, uh, and it was lit- literally was next door. So we'd make the parts, take them down, and, and we were certainly involved and um, there throughout, mm. but it was really that, those guys that, that put it all back together, and they did a fantastic job. I mean, you wouldn't, to be honest, when it was all done, you, you'd really struggle to see that, that it was a repair. It was, it was very good, and again, Gurit did a fantastic job of, um, okay. you know, not, not easy to to patch all that in and do all those scarfing and all the rest of it. It was, it was a big, big job and very well done, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, we've been getting some great comments from, from people watching, so um, they've been asking a few questions, etc. but we're going to ask them a question now. So I'm going to pop that up just before we uh, uh, go on to Jason. Are you asking me? Sorry. Well, yeah. If you if you want to answer that, you can. <laughs> I can't answer that. I wouldn't want to. Speak, you know. I don't want to <laughs> Who do you think will win the twenty twenty Vendee Globe? Uh, people watching, uh, put your uh, answers in the comments box. Um, Jason, I mean Hugo Boss has got to be one of the fancy boats for the Vendee Globe, um, but they're not taking part in the Vendee Arctique. Uh, in eight days' time, they go off. But your sister ship, Sheral, another VPLP, is. Are you going to be watching that? Oh, I think for sure we'll we'll watch it. It's always. I mean, I I love. Uh, I I follow those events anyway. You know, I'm, I'm very interested. Um, and and of course, it'd be good to see how Sheral go. I mean, they are. They're all, although they're you know this is from the same design house. There's still quite big differences. You know, the and I think the foils particularly on all the boats. Are, you know, there are differences there which make boats stronger or weaker in certain areas but for, for sure we'll we'll watch it and Shirelle is pretty close to um Alex's boat mm-hmm. yeah we'll, we'll mm-hmm. certainly be watching okay <laughs> <laughs> and uh let's bring this one up um I'll take that down now because I I, I I by the way I'm really good at predicting like fast net winds and everything else but when it comes to like Volvos I'm hopeless so I'm not going to say anything <laughs> at all okay, about yeah i'm not yeah i'm not much better <laughs> uh, I, remember, I, remember, uh, uh, yeah. I remember winning the um winning the import race on ericsson one and i think i can't remember i think we were, were we in sanchenko well, i can't remember we won that inshore race and uh abn were last and uh we came um we <laughs> neil and i were walking up the dock feel, feeling like we'd won the race you know like it was all over <laughs> and we and abn were just coming in and neil Neil prod him and he said, shit up. <laughs> so, of course. <laughs> but we were regretting that, my God. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jinx it at all. But yeah. you know, the last two Vondays, Alex has come second and third, and, and if it hadn't been for a bus foil, would have probably won the last one. Um so you know, he's gotta be He's got to be in with a shout if 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 the boat doesn't get damaged and he you know and the boat performs, uh, for sure. Um, yeah. Mo- just it's... moving on, here we have a shot of Alex in this enclosed cockpit. What what can you tell us about this radical design of the enclosed cockpit? Uh, well, I, I can't. I don't think I can tell you much. I, you know, but I think you know. Obviously, it was Alex's. Um... Alex was pretty committed to this idea early on, and I think we were all again when one of those those early meetings around around this table actually with the Grand Fromage and everybody else. Um, I think we all thought, "Wow, that's pretty uh, that's pretty wacky. How's, how's that going to work?" But um, I don't know. I think it, we just got more and more sold by it really. And I know one e- one evening, Alex or one afternoon, Alex phoned me and said, "Did I did I want to go for sale on HB6?" And it was a it was like a 30 knot northerly or something and I I went you know I went of course I went and um I I was staggered at how you know just the how aggressive these boats are and just just living on the boats you know just moving around the boats and and you know that was pretty flat water and the thing's underwater a lot of the time and I I just I thought god he's got it right you know I think you why what you even if you what would you do outside you can't see anything there's not you know so I think uh, personally I think it's a was a good idea and I, I do think you'll see boats going in this direction and there have been quite a few refits of 
the boats already, um, you know, new boats. And they have, it's quite hard to go the full hog to, to do what Alex has done if you didn't do it initially. Like just to get all these lines down below is a is a massive amount of work, which again that was driven by by their team and and Pete and so on. It's it's not easy. So to to do it retrospectively, I'd say it's it's not really possible. So, but they have they've gone halfway house. You have seen more enclosures, and I think you're right. going to see more of it. Right. Yeah. In- interesting. And let you know. Let's face it. You, you you touched on it there when you went out for a training session with Alex. I mean, he, he's in danger, there's no doubt. You know, racing around the world in, 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 at that speed, in, in, you know, for 80 days or, or 70 days or whatever it's going to take. Does, you know, for you and your team at Carrington Boats, does that prey on your conscience? Yeah, it does. It, it's, um, it's for sure the thing that, you know, you asked me about sleepless nights. I mean, that, that worries me more than anything. It's, you know, in the old days, I, in some ways... When you build the boat and then you go on and you sail and you sail it, you know you're you're there, so you un, you know you understand the boat. You can you can be part of the fix or the or part of the decision to maybe slow down or look after the boat or whatever. But but you know you're you're there and if you can deal with it, it we you know I just feel I worry like crazy about Alex, you know, on that boat, and I I try to let the guys and the girls know here, you know, that's you know something we. we <laughs> You know, a mistake that we make could ha- could have a terrible impact on Alex. You know, his race and his, and, and and himself. You know, so it's a it's a big thing. And the boats are so, you know, they are so extreme now. These boats, it's, it's incredible. And then they're pretty, they're pretty pared down. You know, they're, they're they're light structures for what they're doing. I mean, they they are incredibly strong, but they're still you can break them. Um, yeah. And just the, you, you know, so and it's this composite boat building. It's, you know, you tend to these are mocker boats and, and even more so the cup it's very the, the information is very hand to mouth you know you don't it's not like you get a bunch of drawings three months before you start and you digest it and you know do all the work instruction sheets it's happening pretty much daily so it's mm-hmm. it's very it's challenging you know to get the right information out there and then to make sure the guys understand it and, and put the right laminate on and cook it properly mm-hmm. and all the rest of it so yeah it's, it, it really does uh, it's, it worries me quite a bit yeah yeah well, we're going to sort of uh, finish the section on Hugo Boss, the Amoka 60, with a, a, a lovely little video. And thank you very much to Alex Thompson Racing for this. Here we go. And not not even Louis to be honest. But I think it was, this is a pretty challenging. But this but RB1 we built alongside Hugo Boss, so we built them together. Um, you know, I mean that was a very challenging time. You know, it was about this time last year we were pretty much pretty close to delivering both boats, so we had a pretty big team um, split between the two projects. Um, so actually, I think Alex is actually this boat left first on a barge, and then Alex's boat left uh, about a month later. Um, Yes, it was a definitely a challenging period. <laughs> yeah.
Um, not at the moment. I mean, I would, I would like to go. I've, um, I don't have to go. I think um, that they, they have a very, Ineos have a very strong. I mean, it's a very strong team all round, really. But the, you know, the, the shore team is strong. The, the boat building team is um, led by a great mate of mine, Paul Quinn, Quinny. Um, so that you know, they're very capable of keeping the thing going. Of course, we'll we'll support all we can, and if, if there are dramas, we'll be you know we're eager to help. Um, but um, no, I think once you know once they've got the boat, they they manage pretty well, and then they are you know they've been sailing all this week on this boat. Um, they had a good session in uh, Italy, so I think you know they they've been going well, and um, it's you know they're a great team to work with. Obviously, a great sponsor, and um, I think this second time around, it's you know it was pretty tough the first time. It takes it just takes time to get a team like this up and running with all the different people and the different departments and they, they you know they feel they're certainly fun to work with and it's it's challenging but um I, I feel they're a strong team certainly Uh, well, more just in well in, in terms for us the builder you know la last time with the cats um that they were very much the, the engineering was a supply package and the hull lines were the same for the catamarans the beams it was it was kind of everyone had the same it, it was more it was really all about the boards um and the systems that's where that's where people got the got the jump um whereas now you know the um you, you've seen the boats look quite different the the laminates are down to the the, the engineers in each team um so it's you know and it's it's made it's made it a bit much a well, much bigger challenge i suppose it's been fun for us because we, we're involved in that and we have we have guys from ineos here every day have been here today still will be here today um mm -hmm. and it's, it's very much a combined effort and they they you know they have a free run of the place where you know there's nothing we don't hide anything and um we just work together to, to try to do the best we can but they they you know these are a these boats, certainly in terms of the composites, are even you know they're even a notch up from the Imoka boats in that they're you know right. there's very very little margin on the on the structures. They're so refined, um, you you can't afford to put massive safety factors on them. You know you you've just got to they've got they, you don't want them to break, but you can't afford to be heavy for obvious reasons. So they're they're certainly a challenge. The good the good thing about these cut boats is we do structurally test them before we sail them. So they we flip the whole boat upside down and we mm -hmm. put all the loads through the different different structures, different systems, which gives you, it gives you some confidence, but it's still, it's not the same as, you know, going out and sailing when you, you know, it's funny when we're doing the structural testing, it's dead, we normally do it at night, it's dead silent, you can hear, a, you could hear a mouse run across the floor, uh, and, and you know, any little crack, everyone's, oh, you know, you stop and you check it and you, and you go up in every, you know, in little increments of load while you're checking the boat, but once you give it to the sailors, <laughs> you know, God knows what's going. You know, they, you don't hear any of that stuff, and, it, and yeah. probably the the loads are more, you know, coming much faster. It's yeah, it's interesting. But you know, you've got to totally get it on the on the design principle, and this is aerodynamics. This isn't hydrodynamics. This is aerodynamics. How do you switch over switch over to that? It it it, it boggles my mind. You, you're switching from you know. Everything you've learned for many many years has been hydro. This is aero. Yeah, but that's you know that's really for the for the design team, and they have very you know I'm sure all the teams have very strong um, people in those departments. But you're right. I mean that's all that's all very much considered, and in, in everything you make, every, every part you make, you know, has got some sort of fairing on it, or a, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're incredibly racing. The, the weight of some of these things is staggering. You know, they're they're, they're great fun. I mean, but it's. It's just you know we've got a great team here who kind of get it you know and that this this boat's managed by a chap called Mike Davis who work who works really closely with the team he he was up you know we we all worked with um within the months before we started building um mm -hmm. certainly RV two you know in terms of how we'd build it how we'd tool it what materials we would use and and so on so yes yeah, definitely yeah. A, a team effort. And I know that you are very good friends with uh, Marcello Persico and Mark Somerville that are building Luna Rossa. Yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, 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 do you just not talk to them at all? How, how does that work? No, we talk and, we, you know, we are, we, we've 
built a lot of boats together over the years and we we've supported each you know they've been good to us and i hope we've been good to them you know when you know helping out each other out with parts and and obviously they they had a we've all had a horrid time with this coronavirus but they really were in the thick of it in bergamo and i and I've, I've lived out there for many months with you know building boats for for nicholas and for ian with abu dhabi and so I, I know the place really well and i know i know the team and i i'm you know very close with marcello and mark and um it, so that you know we we chatted a lot then and they had they had a tough time they had to stop and uh, but yeah there's obviously bits we can't talk about but um <laughs> It's it's an it's always interesting chats, but we're very careful not to not to say the wrong things. But it's not it's not you know that's on the build front. But you've got you know Nick Holroy, who's Ineos's head designer, is I think he's you know one of his best mates is Guillaume Verdier. So I'm sure they have similar <laughs> similar discussions. <laughs> Being careful what they say. I tell you, what, I bet a, a lot of people watching would like this as well. I would love to be at a fire on the wall when you have a beer with. Uh... Marcello and Mark after the America's Cup. I think it'd be an interesting conversation. No, it will. It will. It will be fun. I mean, it's always fun once the boats are out there. There's quite. You can imagine there's quite a bit of banter when when we see each other's boats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were pretty rude about RB1. To be fair. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, look. We well. That's all we've got time for this week, Jason. We really appreciate the time you've given us especially as you're in the throes of finishing uh, RB2 for Team Ineos UK. Um, a last few words from you. Uh, well, I think, you know, it's, it, as I said, it's a team effort. And I certainly the guy, the, the team here at the yard, I, you know, I can't thank them enough for, um, you know, they, they put so much effort in, they, they get it and they, they know what we're trying to do. So that, that makes my life a little bit easier, you know, that takes the, takes the sting out of it. And then, and then there's just some people that have helped me along the way. I, you know, um, Bill and Ian, obviously Bill Green, who's no longer here, but great help. Brian and Pam, Safari Cooper, Mike Slade, who I sailed with for for um, many years, who was a great help and got got me. In, you know, I think he got me the ride with Laurie initially on um, Fortuna. Uh, Chris Law, who's not here anymore, but took me match racing all those years ago and gave me a chance. Um, and then of course Magnus, who I, you know, I'll always be so fond of and who helped me so much and then of course i must i must thank laurie who, who took me sailing but also really we wouldn't we never would have started the yard without laurie suggesting it and being a massive support for for all of us here he gives us a hard time just like he did on the boat but it's it's good to have him <laughs> yeah and, and thank you know uh, thanks for thanks for letting me chat it's been great it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show jason and uh, please tell laurie that i'm a nice journalist next time you see him <laughs> Um, that, won't, that won't do you any good. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Jason, we've got an opportunity here to tell everybody who's going to be on the Raw Time Over Distance series. Same time, same place will be silver Olympic medalist Luke Patience, who will be joining us. For now, let's play you out with a video featuring Team Ineos UK back out training for the America's Cup. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks, Louis. tough period for the team as it has been for everybody uh, for us now to be back on the water is, is a really big deal it means we can keep our development going obviously that's crucial looking ahead to Auckland next year and for the team you know there's, there's a real positive vibe that comes from being out of the water what we're supposed to be doing so uh, good day